power is to be restored. There is only one way. A sacrifice must be made. My own. <sighs> so this was her plan all along? You... you knew this was going to happen? My grandfather gave his life before me, and now I give mine. No! Why didn't you tell us? Why? Because if I had, you would have stopped me. Of course I would! Forgive me. Please. I never meant to upset you, really. I didn't. You have been so kind to me. It has meant so much. So very much. Now, at last, I can... Say it. And mean it. Thank you so much. Gloria, please. You've got to wake up. Gloria! What... What was that? The book usually shows us scenes from the past, but... That was something different, right? <sighs> is it true, Gloria? Is that how this is going to end? I... Yes. There is no other way. For the Knight's Nexus to be sealed away, I must give my life. N no! Its power is immeasurable. Even with the Crystal's aid, the Nexus can only be restrained for so long. At full strength, the Crystals can keep its evil at bay for two centuries at best. Fifty years ago, my grandfather laid down his life in order that that strength might be replenished. He did his duty as a monarch of the Musen line, but then the Crystals were stolen, and their blessings misused. Now their power is all but spent once more. Which means another sacrifice. And a lot sooner than expected. And you've known that this whole time? Yes. And I have long since made my peace with the burden I must bear. My life is a trivial price to pay when weighed against the countless thousands that would otherwise be lost. But Gloria... Are we really going to let her do this? Where are you going? To find another way to end this. But there is no other way. Your grandfather and Sir Sloane seem to think there was. I have to believe they were right. Wait, the book? Maybe there's something in there that can help us. My time to shine, is it? Right so, let's have a wee look-see. But you can't read it all yet, can you? I... Uh... Let's see now. Um... <sighs> Fine. Guess there's nothing else for it. Time to visit Fairy Town. Fairy Town? You mean... My sister found out about the Knight's Nexus before she left Magmel, right? Maybe we can learn something useful there, too. Well, hang about. I didn't think humans were able to get to your hometown. Oh, you'll get there, no problem. As to whether they'll let you in, or me for that matter, well, that's another question. I left, too. And long enough ago that I can't exactly pretend not to have been corrupted by humans. Hey, come on now. Still, it's the only idea we've got, so I'll just have to try and talk them round. Sounds like we need to hurry. Come on, then. The entrance to Magmel is in the Wayward Woods. What? It's where? You mean it was right under our noses this whole time? Yep. In fact, we walked right past it at least once. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, then. Time to pay the fairies a visit. Hi. 
hear it. I hear the voice of hate. It's alive, and it's coming home at last. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I won't. They'll die. Every last human will die. They took everything from me. The people I loved. My home. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And now I'm going to take everything from them in return. Everything. Say goodnight, children of men. Never forget. Never forget. Now come, destroy it all! The humans, their stupid world, everything! <laughs> Hey, Roddy. What are you doing? Oh, don't tell me you're tidying up the mess for Gentio made all by yourself. And why shouldn't I be? I have to lead by example, have I not? Working yourself into an early grave's no example to be setting. What would Lily say? Ah, volunteering to help, are we, Elvis? Very kind of you. Many hands make light work and all that. Wait, I never... Ah, oh, me and my big mouth. Come on, surely you're not planning on leaving an old pal in the lurch? Ah, uh, fine. Let's get to it, shall we? This takes me back. We did a lot of tidying up after folks once upon a time, eh? After Lady Emma, you mean? Aye. She just couldn't turn the challenger down. Insisted in giving every two-bit wizard who rolled into town a shot at the title. That she did. And it was always us who had to pick up the pieces afterwards. Ah, great days. <laughs> and here we are doing it again. We never learn, do we? On the contrary, old pal. This is about not forgetting where we came from. There, all done. As near as damn it anyway. It'll do for starters. Now, I owe you something to say thanks. Ho <laughs> ho! The drinks are on Roddy, eh? Lead on, big man! <laughs> I think I can do a little better than that. And what exactly am I supposed to do with a ratty old bit of wall dash? 
you'll not be doing anything with it. I'm going to use it to make you a wand that'll help you out there on your travels. You are, eh? I care a friend indeed, Roddy. All that for little old me? No, don't get too excited just yet. I'll be needing you to gather the rest of the ingredients first. You what now? Oh, wipe that look off your face. It's just a few simple bits and bobs, that's all. First, I'll need some meadow mist. It's a plant that grows over towards Halcyonia. Then we'll be needing some cactus milk. You can find that in Savalon or thereabouts. And last but not least, a chunk of moonstone ice. Rheindal's your go-to spot for that. A few simple bits? We'll have to traipse halfway around the world for that little lot. Aye, that you will. And it'll be more than worth your while, believe me. <sighs> Fine. If you reckon this wand of yours is so special, I suppose we can give it a go. I knew you'd come round soon enough. Right, I'll carry on putting things back in order here. You come and find me when you've got the goods.
Very well. I'll do nicely. All right, who's next? Here I go. Sorry, pal. Don't get complacent now. There you are, and in one piece. The monster is gone, and we brought you your snow lilies. You did? Goodness me, I can't thank you enough. We will depart for Sir Sloane's grave right away. When I close my eyes, it all comes back to me so vividly. I can see the events of half a century ago as if they happened only yesterday. Sir Sloane once told me that he gave snow lilies to his wife on the day that he asked her to marry him. He never mentioned that to me. Hmm. I somewhat doubt that he ever meant to let it slip at all. It was the only time I ever saw him blush. Hard to imagine, no? Hmm. You okay, Gloria? Yes. I was just thinking about what snow lilies are supposed to symbolize. Returning to a loved one. They wouldn't be my first choice for a marriage proposal. Perhaps not, but you must understand at that time, Sir Sloane's nightly duties often took him away from home for months on end. His beloved, alas, was not physically strong enough to accompany him, and she never would be. Given the circumstances, one can see why he might wish to assure his future wife that though he wandered, he would always come home to her, and assure her it did. She would have waited until the end of time and beyond, certain in her heart of his eventual return. And then, at last, he returned once and for all. And here they lie, together for eternity. Sir Sloane rarely spoke of his wife during our time together. But he did tell me that she had passed away while she was still young and that they had loved one another very much. Hmm. An understatement. Many's the time I felt envious of their bond. But I had better be getting back. Will you be accompanying me, Your Highness? I think I'll stay a little longer. I understand.
Here I go. This will shut you up. Here I go. Did you see that? I'm amazing. Take it personally. Don't be complacent now. 